Haley, how are you? Thank you so much for hanging with me on Phase Zero today. Oh, it's a pleasure to see you. How are you doing, Brandon? I'm great. I'm even better now because I get to talk to you about a project I really loved. And I think you probably had a good time on this one, huh? Could you tell? I couldn't really hide it, could I? <laughs> and if I close my eyes, it's like I'm talking to Captain Carter. This is crazy. <laughs> or if I open them. <laughs> are coming out yeah <laughs> that's amazing so i want to i want to actually start at the beginning of what if uh because w when you started this project did you know that essentially your captain carter character was i mean maybe aside from the watcher was basically going to be the main character like the through line through the, these anthology episodes that kind of culminates th these seasons i well, no i think it's partly because i sort of i'm seeing it from sort of the way in from from Peggy Carter's point of view. So I don't think she sat there going, am I the star? Do I, how many lines do I have compared to other people? I'm sort of just following what her, her perspective is. And I think also because, you know, there was so much of the animation that I wasn't watching as I was recording it. And I'm sort of so aware that, that the studio was so brilliant at tweaking as they go along of making adjustments amendments they'll run with an idea if an actor comes in with something that they really like so i also knew that everything really is is kind of is up for grabs and so you just focus on the creative process of it try and work out what peggy's perspective is and how to make it as engaging as possible for the audience oh and it came out so well i love season two especially i mean season one was fun but season two i, I thought it was fantastic and, and one of my favorite things about what if especially in season two is how they make these variant characters they feel so consistent with their live action, you know, sacred timeline counterparts. And then they go on these wild multiverse adventures that kind of change them and give them new arcs. So I'd love to hear about has playing Captain Carter and Peggy Carter through this variant version kind of helped you unlock a perspective or learn anything new about her through these new adventures you're going on with her? Well, I think it's not so much that I learned anything new from her, but I think maybe the audience get to just see her act out how competent she is. Um, you know, if we see her in sort of the live action world and that story, um, it, it was very much sort of like she was she was the adult in the room that was also kind of frustrated because there's so much she couldn't do. And she was also in this kind of state of paralysis because of this grief that she was experiencing. And I always kind of thought like, like all human beings, we have so much potential in us for so much more than often the circumstances will allow us to explore that this animation version, this what if was a great celebration of that. Like what if we put her in this kind of world where she was not only physically competent and capable, but she was given the opportunities to really have fun. And I think, you know, it kind of shows in the fact that given given more power, she she uses it really well. I think it really suits her. Oh yeah, that oh my god, that final suit. I have like the Captain Carter Hot Toys from season one. I told you at mission I was gonna buy this. I meant it. I had to get it. Thanks to Sideshow and Hot Toys, here it is. This is well okay. Well let me ask you that. What is it like to like be an action figure? What when does that set in that like you're you're on shelves at the store? It it's 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 wild. It's when I'm walking past a shop window and I, I go through a mixture of going, oh no, don't look at me, don't look at me, I'm anonymous. And then I'm also like, it's me, guys, it's me. Um, <laughs> it's a very, it's like I've got the English side of myself, which is very sort of modest. And I've got the American side of myself that's like full on owning, con like confident, very happy to be like, I'm here, guys. Um, but my mom, I tried to give a model, a set to my mom. I was like, mom, do you want one? Do you want a figure? And she's like, why darling? I've got the original mold. <laughs> oh, wow. See, I would be so annoying if I was an action figure. I would be, I, I would have one with me all the time. Like, guys, you know, this is, uh, this is, this is me. Uh, but <laughs> it, it, season two, we got to see this, this in the 1602 episode, which is my favorite episode of the whole season. It, it brought back Peggy and, and Steve together, variants of the characters, for the first time since we saw them have that kind of Infinity Saga culmination in Endgame, which was such an incredible moment. So, And this was different for doing an animation, and it's Josh Keaton as Steve Rogers this time around. But I want you, you know, going back and kind of having to tap back into that relationship after it had such closure in Endgame, what was that like for you? I think it's it, because I sort of know it, it exists in the kind of cultural consciousness of, of the fans who loved that story. Um, it's it's satisfying to go back to something that's familiar because of the context of their past and their shared mm -hmm. experience. 
you know, the whole thing has been framed and set up so well that when the audiences are watching it, they're like, oh, they know. So they they are part of this relationship as much as Peggy and Steve are. Like they, they've been with us from the beginning and kind of, you know, rooting for us to have the right ending. So I think that that's what the studio does so well is it it delivers those that those that heartfelt um, connections to the audience that they that they're wanting. So who was your favorite character to see Captain Carter paired with this season? Because you got to work with a lot of characters you didn't work with in the live action yet anyway. I know, I know. Well, it's well, I, I'm I'm curious about what landed for you because for me, the 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 sort of ups the the sad thing to kind of like that 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 sort of bursts the bubble or the illusion of of this kind of magic making is that I didn't get a chance to act with anyone, right? So wow. it's just me in a booth grunting and, and <laughs> making lots of effort sounds and sort of having our wonderful director read in the lines of everyone else. So I'm curious to see from your point what what you enjoyed, like what felt for you the most. I don't know, natural, considering that you now know that I, w- I was never, I never had the opportunity to act hear a response. I loved the Black Widow relationship in, in was that episode four or five? Uh, that kind of rendition of the Winter Soldier, but Peggy Carter edition. I thought that relationship was a ton of fun. Well, I also love seeing, particularly in a franchise, and any sort of fr- a franchise like this that is, is particularly a genre that has can so much sent feel that women are often kind of you, you've got the token woman or you've got the archetypal woman that has to fit this this thing for the story mm-hmm. but when you have multiple women within the same franchise that are are they are both kind of respect they respect each other they admire each other but also have the shared understanding of what it's like to be a woman in this kind of situation I think it becomes even more fun, you know, and also having the sort of the, the natural friendships and natural sort of frissons that build up with chemistry of two female characters who are so badass in their own way. It, I think for me, it may, it's 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 really exciting because that's how I feel when I work with other actresses that I really admire. I'm like, mm-hmm. I, I'm the first to jump out and tell them I think they're brilliant and that I feel like it's it's such a celebration of female talent. And I love that. You know, I've I've always been an advocate for and, an, and a supporter of someone. If, if you like someone's work as an actor, go up and tell them. And don't worry if they, they run away or they think you're creepy. It's fine. <laughs> but really tell people if you, you know, really acknowledge people's work if it's spoken to you in some way. So I, you know, and if I got a chance to do that in real, real life, you know, like the Black Widow would be the, the, first, the first port of call for me. Yeah. And well, Haley, I think you were great as Captain Carter. <laughs> but Lake Lake Bell is so great as as Black Widow. Devery Jacobs as uh, as Cahorty is great as well, uh, the new character. Um, and, and speaking of Cordy, you got to do the team up in the finale. And in that finale, Captain Carter essentially becomes like the most powerful being with all of these weapons, all these Infinity Stones. Uh, it's it's this really cool sequence where you get your character gets a whole new costume. I know when you're recording that you're probably not seeing all of that. So I'd love to hear how that was kind of presented to you, that that, that your, your Captain Carter variant and What If gets to become this almighty, using Hela's weapons, the hammer, the Infinity Stones, all that. What'd you think of it? It's, it's, it, it, it's, it descri- I've read it, obviously I read the script first, then when I'm in the booth and I'm having it described to me, because I'm what I, what's happening is that the, the the director is also reading out to me the stage directions. So if I can't see it visually on the screen, he's reading to me what I should be imagining. And so when he's describing all of these things and I'm like, uh, how do I act that? Like, <laughs> yeah. and it was, he kept on saying just like this sense of responsibility of the stakes could not be higher for her, but also the absolute awe of stepping into kind of that level of power. Um, which you know, it's it's you know when you when you suddenly are you you gather these tools around you or you look around and think to yourself, this is I chose the right outfit today. I feel like I'm going to take over the world today because my hair's looking fantastic. And it might seem to me so, the so, most superficial thing, but you know, like when you walk out the house and you know you've got it right, and you know you're like, I think that shirt was cinched the deal in that meeting because of what it what it gives you. And I've always felt that with Peggy, she understands the power of aesthetics to give her a sense of armory too, whether it's just obviously with what she's wearing in this or even even what she's wearing in kind of more of a day off thing. Everything for her is a strategic way of how she wants to be presenting to the world. So this this was just like just a, an extended version of that. And that goes right back to the first Captain America movie, how she has to like, you know, present herself all the time. 
Yeah, totally. Yeah. And we, yeah. we also get any choice we make, even if it's to kind of to go outside in our pajamas, is a choice. That's right. <laughs> we're, yeah, we're telling That's, right. That's true. I was like, I'm going to go get coffee this morning, but I can't do it in my robe. I have to look dressed for the world. I'm in LA. Oh my gosh. Uh, <laughs> do, do you believe that this Captain Carter from What If is the ultimately destined to become the Captain Carter from Doctor Strange, or are they separate variants? Do you have a hope? Do you have a thought? A belief? I think because of the nature of this, the the the, the, the you know the the incredible spider web of possibility and all these parallel worlds, I think there is a freedom there to not get necessarily too attached to one thread. Mm -hmm. um, and again, I think you know with with she was also fulfilling a particular role in that moment in Doctor Strange where it was quite much more somber it was much more serious and earnest and you know the the kind of the the, the setup of the gag of, of of going I could do this all day and then immediately getting cut in half by a frisbee essentially is a you know is it is a kind of a is a, a fun silly gag thing but I think it tonally is not necessarily what we've done and what if so I think mm -hmm. they, they can they can exist in pockets of their own world based on what each project needs to be but it doesn't have to be fixed and i think anything sort of beyond anything sort of develop the character of captain carter i think you take many aspects of her you take the fact that she loves what she does and yet she still has this weight of responsibility in her shoulders she is in love you know she'll always love steve and she's but she will be able to move past grief to have a deeper sense of purpose in who she is and I think yeah, just that that we can we can keep developing her based on what the audience love about her. Oh yeah, and I heard you talk about that Earth eight three eight, the Doctor Strange stuff with Josh Horowitz. I've heard Patrick Stewart. Many a lot of people who were in that sequence they talk about it in very interesting ways because one, it was for a lot of people like, oh, we're doing this thing, it's really cool, and then it's over. And then also, much like what if it sounds like you all filmed it completely alone? It was like were you uh, were you did you film all the completely. So talk, can I just really quickly, just take me on that journey of finding out, okay, I'm going to play Captain Carter in live action, probably very exciting, I imagine, and then, okay, but it's going to end kind of quickly, and you're going to do it alone. Is that kind of like a, the roller coaster I think it is? Yeah, I mean, I think that's also your, your because I think any film that you do, and, and I would say this sort of across the board, board for any de department, everyone has their own, their sort of, their idea of what you think the common goal is in this, or what the, the vision is of the piece. But then there is the the reality of logistics <laughs> and having to work out how to the technical mechanical way of actually building out this vision sort of relies on things that are not necessarily um, uh, that, that, that that can shift and that can change. And so with us, you know, obviously there was pandemic issues and other location changes, and so much was happening that you you every every film at that time was doing what it could to get made and get done in the best way possible in the most efficient way possible. But I do remember on the day um, there was a um, you know we had to wait when when Patrick Stewart's character uh, uh, turns up. There was this kind of gap. We we're creating this sort of moment of suspense and tension within the scene and all the actors who were there had kind of sustained that and they were really concentrating hard and then when Patrick Stewart's character comes through there was this like um mechanical yellow car that was very slow kind of coming up behind us and go and we sort of had to wait for it to swivel into position and that so the hardest thing to do was to keep the focus of this is like how high the stakes were because we were like undermined by this little robotic Kind of delayed, perfectly comedic timing of the something going. Meh. <laughs> it <was> wow! <laughs> well, so I, it's it's incredible movie making magic though because it did look impressively done. Like everybody was really there together. But yeah, I imagine the roller coaster as an individual as a performer must have been interesting. Uh, I want to ask you before we wrap this up. There's a popular theory going back to Captain America: Civil War, where. Steve Rogers, who time traveled or through time travel or multiverse, he, he goes back in time and is ultimately the father of the children Peggy Carter, older Peggy Carter says she had. And if you ask the directors, they'll say one thing. If you ask the writers, they'll say another. Do you have a stance on that theory and whether or not kids are like Steve and Peggy's or if she found someone else? I mean, what an impossible question. I know, I know. I, I understand the, the weight you might feel if you even w weigh in on it. <laughs> I feel like it's sort of, I know, I'm the, my cop-out answer is it's whatever you want it to be. I think it's, it's hopefully it's, to, uh, well, here's my answer. I hope one day we actually find out. I would, I would love, love that. 
I would love, I would love that. To, to not be left guessing or hanging in suspense, but actually all those questions to be resolved in a really satisfying way because that I think the audiences deserve it. And also I think it would be really fun to work out the best version of what that would be and what, what is the most exciting one. Hey, get everyone back from and secret also, like, what, what our kids would look like and whether or not they'd find us oh, really. Oh, co <laughs> come on. Those kids, come on. <laughs> those kids would be D one athletes in the best way. <laughs> they were, or they would just be, you know, they're actually like work. They're, they're like, you know, venture capitalists or like total techie nerds that are like, you guys are annoying. I'm going to rebel and do something completely different. Well, listen, I, I, I hope we see you as Peggy Carter again soon. I mean, I assume what if season three, you'll be back uh, hopefully sooner than later. But who knows? I know we can't say anything definitively. Waiting for uh, the call, guys. And Just Laura, you're doing Laura Croft too. Yes. Coming out next what? summer. Yeah. Okay. But is that amazing? I'm sorry. I know. Is that like the coolest thing ever? Because to me, I love, I grew up on Tomb Raider on PlayStation 2 and all. It's so, the scripts are so good and they're so fun, you know? And I think also, you know, I got, I got so much, I got so much um, practice and preparation for how to sustain the level of activity and energy with just your voice by playing by Captain Carter in this way, that it it was it set me in good stead for going. This is how you you as a voiceover what it takes for you to be confined in a small space and not seen, but totally rely on the voice to test to tell the story and wake up other people's imaginations. So yeah, one thing helped feed the other for sure. That's awesome. Well, Haley, you're you're killing it. It's been so much fun to watch these past few years. You're my favorite part of Mission Impossible. What if Captain Carter are fantastic? Tomb Raider right around the corner. I can't wait to see what's next. Thank you so much for talking with me today. Pleasure. Good to see you. Thanks so much.